In my last video, I went over how Predator is fairly likely for Chapter 30 for a multitude of reasons, so I thought I should make a follow-up video not only covering other licenses possible for the chapter, but also going back and adding a few things as far as Predator is concerned. For the latter, thanks to a few comments from my last video as well as just taking some time to think on it, Predator may not be as likely as I first thought. Granted, he is still on my number one spot, but not by as much as he was before, and I definitely stick around to the end of this video, as I came up with a very interesting theory. Unlikely, maybe, but very interesting. With that, I feel like Predator is a good starting point for the video. Don't worry, I'll get to everyone else eventually, but covering Predator's chances is a good foundation for everyone else. After all, if he's not that likely anymore, that only means everyone else is more likely this time around. Before I get into that, though, it's important to know why I thought he was so likely in the first place. For that, I'd like to refer to the summary I provided in my last video. If you'd like, feel free to go and watch that full video now and come back to this one. It's a pretty well put together video in my opinion. If you've already seen it, want to watch it afterward, or just want the Cliff Notes version, I'll play the summary now. Feel free to skip ahead using timestamps if you'd like. 20th Century Studios owns the licensing rights to both Alien and Predator, making Predator much more likely now that Alien's in. We know Chapter 30 is licensed and a killer paragraph. They could be saving Arnold's likeness for Terminator, thus not wanting to do a full chapter with Dutch as a survivor, though this argument has a few holes in it. And last, 20th Century's past and particularly recent behavior aligns with them licensing both characters in quick succession, meaning a Predator chapter right after an Alien chapter would make sense. Enough prelude, though. Why exactly do I think Predator's less likely now? What changed? Well, for starters, someone brought to my attention the existence of Predator Hunting Grounds. For those unaware, Hunting Grounds is an asymmetrical game, much like Dead by Daylight, that pits the Predator against a fire team. This would be an issue since it wouldn't make sense to have Predator and Dead by Daylight if they already have their own independent game, much like DVD. Keep in mind I said it would be an issue, though. Because this indeed would be a problem, were it not for the current state of the game. Firstly, there's the fact that within the past year or so, the game had a peak of 300 concurrent players. Keep in mind, Dead by Daylight has a peak upwards of 50,000 concurrent players every single month. I can guarantee 20th Century Studios would earn much more money by bringing Predator into Dead by Daylight compared to sticking to Hunting Grounds. Not only that, but Predator Hunting Grounds hasn't received an update in nearly 8 months. Not counting patch notes, it's 9 months. So not only does the game dwarf in comparison to Dead by Daylight, but it's been inactive for quite a while now. If anything, this fact makes Predator more likely to come in. Next, I'd like to touch on something that was brought to me, you know, once or twice. This cosmetic is based on a design from the Alien vs. Predator movies, so this is absolutely a nod from behavior that we're getting Predator in the game. But, there is one problem with this. He was already pretty much confirmed. With all the points I brought up in my last video, it's very easy to conclude he's coming in at some point, but this cosmetic's existence doesn't answer the question of when, so this point doesn't make him any more or less likely. And I know I said Predator's less likely now, but so far I've only given a point that, if anything, makes him more likely, and one that changes nothing. So, what gives? Well, that's where my next point comes in. I got a few comments expressing how they'd be disappointed if Predator came in for Chapter 30 specifically, and they all brought up the same point, and a pretty good one at that. Repetition. More specifically, how we'd be getting extremely similar killers in a row. For one, the Predator and the Xenomorph are both sci-fi themed and, more specifically, both aliens. Furthermore, the chapter before Alien and Transmission also had a sci-fi theme and had a map on an alien planet, much like Nostromo. Even though this is the first time we're really getting to experience sci-fi in Dead by Daylight, it is a lot with no break. And even though I covered in my last video how 20th Century Studios may want back-to-back -back chapters, behavior may not. This would allow Predator to be a full chapter in the future, at the very least one with a survivor, even if it doesn't have a map, as I think that suits it much more considering all the good options for survivors. One last thing I'd like to touch on before moving on from Predator is the problem with their code of honor. Only hunting prey with weapons or a means to defend themselves, and survivors in Dead by Daylight don't really have that. For that, I have a few counters. For one, Dead by Daylight works differently than a Predator's typical hunt. It's much harder to kill in the Entity's realm as it would be elsewhere, namely for the reasons of having to hook survivors multiple times, as well as simply having fewer resources to be able to kill. Second, it's not exactly like the survivors can't defend themselves. They have pallets, windows, and much more with perks. And lastly, simply put, I don't think Behavior would let something like this stop them from putting Predator in the game. It's a very big license, a highly requested one at that, and they would absolutely prioritize just having him in the game over it making complete sense. With all of that out of the way, it's about time I get to everyone else. 
First, of course, let's talk about Springtrap. As mentioned in some of my prior videos, the fact that Chapter 30 is a killer paragraph works great for FNAF, as while there may be some decent picks for a survivor, there's no great picks. For Michael Afton, even though he would no doubt be the best survivor story-wise, he has no design that translate over well to Dead by Daylight. This, of course, isn't counting the FNAF movie, as there's a chance Chapter 30's P2B may drop before the movie releases, and I think it's a little weird to have Michael from the movie appear in a game before the aforementioned film even comes out. Even if it comes after, the P2B will Will no doubt be close to the movie's release date, and I think it'd be too close. This, of course, isn't even accounting for the fact Mike Schmidt from the movies may not be Michael Afton, nothing's confirmed. Second, and I'll lump these two together since they're both from the same game, Vanessa or an aged up Gregory. While either could technically work, I just don't think they're good picks. I will admit, I may be a little biased as I just flat out dislike both characters, but they were both only in one game out of nearly 10, and with Vanessa, she has mere minutes of screen time. Moving on from why FNAF fits most for a killer paragraph, I'd like to go more in depth about something I just brought up. The Chapter 30's P2B and thus its reveal is incredibly close to the release date of the FNAF movie. Although we don't have an exact release date for the former, we can use the previous dates of Dead by Daylight chapters around this time to confirm it will most likely be in late October or early November, with a FNAF movie releasing October 27th. Even though I do think it's too close to the movie's release to contain content from it, it's not unlikely they release a chapter with Springtrap to celebrate and promote the movie. One quick and final point I'd like to make is how behavior may have an indirect connection with Scott Cawthon and or Steelwool, owners of FNAF. This is because the company producing the FNAF movie, Blumhouse, is also making the Dead by Daylight movie. Furthermore, the announcement of the Dead by Daylight movie was made a little over six months ago, though it most likely was in progress for at least a few, if not several months before its announcement, giving behavior just enough time to make FNAF Chapter 30. All in all, FNAF is pretty likely this time around, though not as much as Predator, as much as I wish it was. Next, I'd like to quickly touch on Candyman. First, there's a question of whether or not he'd fit for a killer paragraph, and I'd say he would. While there is Helen Lyle, the protagonist from the first film, there are a few problems I have with this. For one, she becomes her own sort of Candyman by the end of the film. While it is true the entity could just take her before this happens, it just doesn't seem fitting in my opinion. And for two, there's the fact she's only the protagonist of the first film. So although she may be a good pick for a survivor, to most people a Candyman wouldn't feel incomplete without her, like an alien chapter without Ellen Ripley would have. So while I could see Candyman chapter being either a paragraph or a full chapter, I personally just find a paragraph more fitting. Furthermore, on a panel for the upcoming Spider-Man 2 game at San Diego Comic-Con, Tony Todd revealed that he was working on another game, though not disclosing any details about it. There is a chance this could be a Candyman chapter for Dead by Daylight, in which case the timeline would line up with Chapter 30. This would also mean we would most likely have Tony Todd's likeness as Candyman, as well as maybe some voice lines. All in all though, it's not too strong of a case as this could very easily just be another game. Still, it was worth mentioning nonetheless. For the next license, I'd like to discuss Pennywise. I'll do my best to keep this brief as I already covered him relatively well in my Chapter 29 analysis video, but I'll still summarize the points I made there as well as add a few things. To start things off, I'd like to say I'm pretty confident in saying an it chapter would work well either as a killer paragraph or a full chapter. For the former, Pennywise is the only real iconic character from the franchise in my opinion, so it wouldn't be unfitting, but there are undoubtedly many good choices for survivors found in the Losers Club, as well as the fact it is a pretty big license, well deserving of a full chapter. With that in mind, I'll move on to discuss why I think he's so likely for Chapter 30 specifically. About a year ago, Warner Brothers lost the rights to Pennywise, or any character slash part of the IT franchise for that matter, to Stephen King. However, as confirmed by behavior, Dead by Daylight chapters take about a year to develop, so the timeline would line up just about right for Chapter 30 to be Pennywise. This is because they would be more willing to license him into the game during that period in an attempt to make some last money with the license. Furthermore, I'd argue this is most likely the last chance Behavior would have to license Pennywise into the game through Warner Brothers. Though I suppose there is a chance they still could have made the agreement before they gave up the license and just scheduled it further ahead of time. As such, if Pennywise is not Chapter 30, he will be significantly less likely in my mind to come to the game. All in all, though I wouldn't say Chapter 30 being a paragraph makes Pennywise more or less likely, it would fit. Furthermore, Warner Brothers' loss of the IT license means they would be much more open to collaboration. Last, but certainly not least, Slenderman. And yes, for those wondering, this is who I have my aforementioned interesting theory for. Before I get into that though, I'd like to cover all my bases. Slenderman would very much fit a killer paragraph chapter rather than a full one, especially since there's not even one good pick for a survivor. I suppose they could use a character from the movie, but something tells me no one would mind if they didn't. And with that said, let's move on to my theory. Just as a preface though, I want you all to know I am well aware of how much of a reach this theory is. Trust me, it took a lot of tinfoil hats to come up with this one. 
So in the 7th anniversary livestream, it was confirmed that both chapter 29 and 30 would be licensed. Not only this, but it was said that they're licensed, and I quote, with a big L. Obviously, this was meant to imply that they're big licenses, real iconic additions to the game, which even was explicitly stated. But what if I propose the idea that big L has a double meaning? What if it's referring to the L in Slenderman? Now, again, I acknowledge how much of a reach this is, but just entertain me for a second. Alien was Chapter 29, and the word Alien 2 has an L in it. Even if Chapter 30 turns out to be Slenderman, there's a pretty good chance this wasn't planned. No offense to behavior, I just don't think they would have planned this far ahead. Although, it's still a very interesting theory in my opinion, something fun to think about. Slenderman may not be super likely for Chapter 30, but I wouldn't count him out. Like my final video on Chapter 29, I'll end things off by making a top 5 list of who I think is most likely this time around. Though I won't go as in-depth as I did last time. For number 5, I'll have Slenderman. Number 4, Candyman. Number 3, Pennywise. Number 2, Springtrap. And still, at number 1, Predator. Even though the last time I did this was my final video on Chapter 29, this most likely won't be my last video on Chapter 30. In fact, I plan on making a video theorizing Chapter 30's reveal date as soon as the date for the upcoming mid-chapter PTB is announced, as that's all I really need to narrow it down. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. On the topic of subscribing, according to YouTube statistics, only 1.5% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, and especially if this isn't the first time you're watching my content, please consider subscribing. You can always change your mind later, and it helps me out a lot. And one last thing I'd like to touch on before ending this video, monetization. For those unaware, I just recently became a YouTube partner, and this will be my first video uploaded as a partner. I know I've already asked you all to subscribe, but since I'm earning money from watch time now, please consider sharing the video around. Not your typical YouTuber request, I know, but it would seriously help me out, maybe even more than subscribing. Also, on top of ads, being a YouTube partner unlocks channel memberships. If you have the money to spare, and you really enjoy my content and want to support me in the best way possible, you can be the first to become a member of this channel. Some perks include early access to new videos, custom emojis to use in comments and in livestream chats, exclusive content, and the shoutout at the end of every video. And all of that can be yours for just $3 a month. Alright, I've gone on way too long now. Massive thanks to anyone who stuck around to the end. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.